Hello! Thought I'd make a video showing my automatic sorting system. So items come in here, this is the input. Uh, you can place them, place like a storage down here or pull up with a truck. These three auto arms will take all the items off and put them onto this big storage area. So you can unload a lot of items and then store them while they get sorted. From there they go through the sorting machine, through all these auto arms, and end up over here uh, in, in all the storage areas. And everything is just out and available to grab and it'll just replenish so it's real easy to come in, grab a bunch of stuff and be on your way. It also sorts smelted items. So for copper for instance, it'll take any copper that goes into the system and just put it straight into the storage. Uh, and then it'll also take malachite, smelt it up and then put it into the storage. And it keeps a little bit of the non-smelted material behind just in case you need it for something. For the gases, they get sorted like everything else into the medium gas canisters. Uh, each gas gets its own canister. And then I have, because they're only really used for the chemistry lab, so I have buttons where I can just press a button and get one of the gases delivered to this tray and then they'll automatically go up and be used for any recipe I do. The quartz is the only real thing which you might want half and half because you use a lot of glass and a lot of quartz for various things. So it just splits it back here, half gets smelted and half just goes into storage. So let's say we went for a mining trip in the old truck. No! and everything gets sorted. So this is the basic sorting module um, spread out a little bit. So you have the one arm sorting whatever you want uh, to sort out of the of the chain and then this is just a, the chain so it'll be you know a platform and then an arm and then a platform and then an arm and at each platform you can sort out another item. So like if you put compound in here it'll go that way to storage and if you put something that isn't compound it'll just continue along the arm so it's pretty simple it's just a storage sensor with a count repeater with one count already set uh, two total counts and that goes to a delay repeater that's set to 15 which I found was the sweet point and then the count repeater also goes to the auto arm and then the delay repeater goes to the auto arm and the storage sensor is set to empty or not empty. So what that'll do is an item will come in, it'll activate the uh, storage sensor, that'll activate the count repeater, that'll turn off this auto arm, and then this auto arm has time to grab the item if it is the one it's filtering out, um, and if it isn't then 15 uh, counts will go past and this auto arm will come back online and pick up the item and move it. The two counts is because when an item comes goes out of the storage it will set off the um, storage sensor again because it'll be empty. In practice you'd probably condense this as much as you could but you just have to be careful not to have auto arms picking up stuff from other inventories and putting them in the wrong places.
So this is the setup for any smeltable resource, which is a little bit more complicated. It's the same filtering system as before, but there's just some extra processing. So an item comes in here, say it's Wolframite, it'll be taken by this arm and put into the storage area. The reason I have three medium resource canisters is because if you have a lot of Wolframite coming in from a big like mining trip or something, you're going to fill them up as the, the smelter slowly smelts it down. And if this overflows, the extra Wolframite's going to just end up going through the chain and ending up in the at the end. So you don't want it, you want it to be stored here while the smelter smelts it down. So all the canisters are set to output, so they'll always output to this storage. And then there's a storage sensor on this uh, 8 storage, set to full or not full. So basically, when this storage fills up, the smelter will turn on and smelt down the Wolframite. So then once it's smelted, it'll pop off the end and get picked up by this auto arm and end up in the, in the storage. The important thing here is that this auto arm also touches the, uh, the initial platform. So it actually needs to be a bit closer than this to pick up both those slots. Probably about like that. So if any tungsten comes in through the system, this auto arm will pick it up. This can be pretty finicky because there's a lot of stuff very close to each other. When you try to put it all very close together in a, in a tight space, it gets very tricky. Because um, this, for example, it can't be put in the the Wolframite any on any other furnaces or anything like that. Uh, and it can't be putting them into this canister because then it could fill up with Wolframite instead of tungsten. And then this one needs to be quite precisely positioned to pick up the tungsten from here um, and also the tungsten from the smelting furnace. So that's the basic layout of the smeltable resource and just any resource and then they can just stack next to each other. Um, it's a bit easier if you spread them out a bit but it's nicer functionally if they're quite close together. As you can see I've got mine fairly close together. Um, makes it nice and easy to grab stuff quickly. They are in a like a uh, road formation I want to say. Uh, you could probably put them in a circular formation and be able to grab every resource from standing in a single point. With this setup I can not quite grab both sides but almost. A few other things to note is you want the resources to be coming into the system at the same rate um, that they're being sorted otherwise it'll overflow and break so it's pretty easy the one that's bringing them in to the first uh, platform that gets sorted is just connected to the delay repeater that's um, connected to that first platform so it will only bring things in at the same rate as they are sorted and then moved on by like this one it's also easy to have uh, like multiple inputs, like I have one input here, um, but then I also have a chain going up here over this archway to my um, unloading station by my uh, landing pads. So I can unload stuff into here and it'll work its way over into that storage and then through the sorting system. For overflow here at the end of the system, I have it coming up here and then I've just got this uh, large storage with some medium storages on it and it takes anything that doesn't get sorted out. If it does overflow, it will break because having two items on the platform will mean that the sensor doesn't detect like a new one coming in or going out. So I won't deactivate this and it just means all the items will th flow through to your overflow storage. So if it does end up overflowing, you just need to let everything come through and then reset it put it back into the start which is pretty easy so yeah it's my fully automatic sorting system it's pretty handy pretty easy to grab stuff do chemistry lab work and then just 
the print stuff up the printers up here works pretty well be warned it is pretty power hungry because all the auto arms are just left on all the time so I've got a big old battery pack back here a bank of batteries some would say um, and then I've got a solar farm so this is the solar farm it's just seven of these solar arrays and it seems to do a good job of getting enough power for the batteries to power everything continuously and I've got a lot more quite a lot more stuff than just the sorting system on it but the sorting system probably takes the most power so yeah hope you enjoyed let me know if there's any questions and I'll see you later